Buongiorno amici. I just had to show you I'm breaking every rule of fashion at the moment that I stand by and believe in wholeheartedly. Actually, really I'm just breaking one, the cardinal one, which is no freaking jeans with sneakers. Uh, it's really not that serious. I just never do this and I hate it. I hate how it looks. Comfort and practicality, 10 out of 10. Fashionable sense and looks wise, 0 out of 10. There it is, guys. Vatican Museum. So we just walked into the Vatican Museum and it is incredibly spectacular. The first thing you see when you walk in is the dome of St. Peter's. How crazy is that? The tour guide told us that it's not in fact the largest dome in the world. Um, it lost the Guinness World Record by one meter to the dome of the Pantheon in Rome. I guess it's one meter larger, which is crazy. Still pretty massive. It's up like 42 meters. Huge. So here's something interesting, guys. Um, I don't know if you can see, but all of the genitals of all of these statues have been broken off in almost all of these figurines, and it's because one of the popes decided that that was just too immodest. So he had all of the genitals broken off of all of the statues, all of the males, and then they put leaves over the top of them. So somewhere in the bottom of the Vatican, there's a box of marble dicks. Yeah. The ceiling of this gallery is painted in a style called chiaroscuro and it's basically just like tricking your eyes to see three-dimensional shapes even though they're completely flat. So I bet it's going to look even cooler on camera. Are you ready for this? Look at that. This whole ceiling is completely two-dimensional. So these tapestries, the reason why they are so valuable is one, historically they're important, they're woven with you know the stories of Jesus and stories of the Bible, but two, they have real gold and silver fibers woven into them. So they are really, really, really like protected and one of the most valuable exhibits at this museum, I guess. All right, Dot, first impressions? Oh my God, it's unbelievable. Crazy. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy all the things they do with the perspective, yeah. like with is the shadows real? and with the like 3D movement yeah. around the tapestries. What are we doing? We are seeing the Sistine Chapel. Oh, and Jesus. Are we ready for this? Are you ready? Born ready. Born ready. Kinda. Just finished our tour of uh, the Sistine Chapel and the galleries inside the Vatican Museum. And this is actually St. Peter's Square right here. And the reason why they hold audience out here is because even though the cathedral is one of the largest in the world, it can only hold 60,000 people, but this square can hold like around 150,000. And that's the balcony where the Pope comes out and talks to people on Christmas and stuff like that. Pretty crazy, guys. This is a really... I'm not like a particularly... like I'm not a religious person actually at all, but you can still feel how important this is to the people that are, and you can feel how much history there is here, and that's, that's the cool part, is that some, things like this can be appreciated by people, whether or not they, you know, affiliate with Catholicism. You can definitely appreciate, like, what this place means to people and, and the history of the location. All right, guys, are you ready to walk in? This is St. Peter's. Oh, my gosh. Michelangelo's very first sculpture ever and it was actually damaged by a crazy tourist. Someone came in with a hammer and broke off part of her hand and part of her face, but they've restored it since then. So this is something that Michelangelo completed when he was 23 years old. Kind of makes me feel like I didn't do anything that important when I was 23. All right, guys, so we are getting ready to go into the Il Convento dei Cappuccini. So this is like the um, Capuchin monks convent. Um, and if you're wondering why it sounds so familiar, yes, it is like the word cappuccino, because apparently um, the robes that these monks used to wear would kind of cover their head. It was like a little covering, a little hood. And I guess cappuccino is kind of the same idea, like capped, covered, coffee drink. I don't know, that was kind of a terrible explanation. But the point is, uh, this is a really sacred place still, um, and there are still some capuchin monks that come here to pay their respects. I can't film in there because it's like it's it's pretty disrespectful. You're not supposed to film in there. Um, some other people might try to do it, but I'm not going to do it because I don't I don't want to disrespect their remains or the people that are still there to worship. But we're getting ready to go in now, so there it is. A few centuries ago, their local graveyard became full, 
and they needed a way to remove the bones gracefully and respectfully without having anything disturbed. So what they did is they painstakingly removed over 4,000 skeletons and then decorated them in the crypt of this church. So this is an obelisk that was actually stolen by the Romans from Egypt because they liked the idea that Egyptians used obelisks to kind of mark when you were in a different area or in a different city. So the Romans adopted the idea and also adopted a few of their obelisks. That's one of them. I'm pretty sure that one is original, which would mean that it's somewhere around 3,000 years old. So we're going to walk down the hill here. This is the Spanish Steps. We're going to walk down here and then we are heading through one of the oldest parts of the city over to the Pantheon, which is going to be magnificent. There's date stamps on the brickwork and they predict that it took 240 years to construct because the entire thing was built by hand. All of the marble columns were, were um, mined in Egypt, put onto boats, sailed across the Mediterranean, put onto wooden boards, dragged through the streets of Rome, and then one by one put up to build the triangular roof on the top. The front section, which is the mantle, used to have beautifully gilded designs on the outside, and that was obviously ransacked and melted down after the fall of the Roman Empire. All right, guys, are you ready? I'm not looking yet, I'm not looking yet, I'm not looking yet. I'm gonna keep my head down as long as I can. Wow! Oh my god, that's cool. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like a complete idiot. I'm just walking down the street with my mouth dropped open. Okay, facts with Joe. What did you just say? This is one solid piece of concrete, the roof is. The roof is. The roof, yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but I think the lady said this is something like 43 meters across. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. <laughs> and then they carved these squares into it, made them smaller at the top to give the illusion of height. Wow. Dateb and I are the last two left in our group with Joe wandering around Rome. There's so much stuff to see. I didn't want to waste any time. So this is Piazza Navona. Um, and this is the fountain of the four rivers. So it's like the four main rivers. I can't remember the names of all of them because I'm a bad student, um, but this is very cool. And there's another one of those Egyptian obelisks out front of this church. Here's what you have to learn about when you're touring really anywhere, but especially around Europe. Alfresco dining in the middle of a square is super popular and super nice. So if you ever get tired, you feel like you need a break, stop off for a beer. And just do people watching, you know? Because sometimes that can be equally as entertaining as seeing all the sights. Taking a break. Cheers. 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 Uh -huh. There it is, guys. The Colosseum. And there's a little bit of work being done in it right now. So unfortunately, it's a little bit there. It's covered up in a couple places. But uh, yeah, that's it. The inside of the Colosseum. And that over there is shows you where ground level was. And these are all the tunnels where the people kept all the animals that would come up into the arena. All right guys, so now we're on one of the upper levels. Check it out. You kind of have to use your imagination a little bit, but there's what I was talking about. That's where the floor would have been. This is where the animals would have come out of. And all of these gates, like apparently the square gates down there were where people used to basically sit to protect the crowd from animals that tried to like jump out and get them. Kind of terrifying. Insane. Right? Wouldn't yeah. you say? I would say. I would say. I, I in fact would say, yeah. if I may. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have too much wine at dinner, guys. You make mistakes like this. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, where's Waldo? Where's the iPhone? It's still there. We're just taking photos of it. Delicious. Imagine putting that against your face now. Oh. <laughs>